Well, hi, Farm and Ranch crew. So we ended before midterms, taking a midterm exam. So we're kind of picking up like brand new and fresh as we move forward in our class. Hopefully you've had taken your time to look through our opening video and kind of peruse through the class and the things that might be changed. Uh, my intention, of course, is not to give you an overload of more than what you would have expected in the classroom, um, except just to kind of give us a few ways to hopefully connect a little bit so that we can feel like we're still having class and still give you guys a chance to visit with one another. So that's kind of my objective is to keep things the same, schedule will stay the same, we'll just add a few things to give us a way to kind of connect to one another. So you, I will be providing you with videos like this. Sometimes they'll be live like this. Sometimes there'll be one where I'm showing you my screen, but you will have plenty of information and we will do that on a weekly basis just to keep you updated so that once we go through things for that week, if I need to create some new videos, um, then I'll be able to have time to do that. So videos will come to you as they do as a week, on a weekly basis. So as we get started, our new topic, after we finished all of our production economics things that we've ended before the midterm is gonna be what we call enterprise budgets. So enterprise budgets, basically as we think about those enterprise budgets, so far what we've done is we've looked at our whole farm situation. We've thought about the assets and liabilities that we have and how much equity we have and that was included on our balance sheet. Then we also talked about what it would look like to have an income statement completed for a farm. You haven't done one for your farm yet, but we will. And on that income statement, you listed all the revenue for the entire farm and all the expenses for the entire farm. And then we tried to see what our net farm income was from just the farming operation. So those are the things we've done to this point. Now we're gonna take it and we're gonna individualize things. So an enterprise budget does just that. When we think about an enterprise budget, we have to think first of all about what is an enterprise itself. So an enterprise is when we separate everything into its own little entity. So we take like just one crop enterprise, like just corn or wheat or soybeans or alfalfa, and we look at just that enterprise alone. Or maybe we look at just our livestock enterprises, but even in those, we separate them. So we might do cow-calf as one enterprise. We might do our feeder cattle that we're feeding as a separate enterprise. If we are backgrounding cattle, that might be separate itself. And maybe we're taking cattle all the way to slaughter weight, so we have a fat cattle enterprise that is taking from feeder cattle weight all the way to slaughter weight, and maybe that's its own enterprise. So we take everything at this point now and we individualize it and we look at different things like crops, feeder cattle, or cow-calf enterprises. Now, as we set up the budget then, the budget's gonna be pretty straightforward. Hmm, we might get to set it up. The enterprise budget is simply gonna be the way that we can show all of the revenue that we make or the income off of that one individual enterprise and then all the expenses that we have for just that one inter individual enterprise. And the purpose for us is to see whether that is profitable. So is just my corn enterprise profitable or not? Is just my cow-calf enterprise profitable or not? Which one is contributing to the overall net farm income for my farm? Which ones are actually losing me money? And maybe those aren't the right enterprises to be growing. So that's what our, our objective is now is to start looking at profitable enterprises and which ones are working. An enterprise budget is gonna look something like this. So as we think through what it looks like, this is kinda of gonna be our setup of our enterprise budget, okay? And so we're gonna look through some of those different categories, but basically as we think through what's included on an enterprise budget, we wanna include all the revenue, we wanna include all of the variable types of costs, those things that we consider operating expenses, and we wanna look at all of our things that we consider fixed costs, and that will give us the ability to decide what is our total cost for our operation, and then what's our bottom line profit. So profit is gonna give us an idea when we think about that profit, we're gonna think about it as economic profit. So a couple of keys to think about with our enterprise budgets. Number one is when we do that enterprise budget, we're gonna do it on a per acre or a per head basis. So in other words, when we take our, just our corn enterprise and we wanna look at the profitability for just corn, we're gonna look at how much money we make per acre. So if we're yielding 200 bushels of corn and we're selling the corn for $4 a bushel, then we're, our revenue is $800 per acre on our corn. Then we're gonna look at just the costs for corn on a per acre basis. 
and we want to know what are all the production costs in terms of the variable costs and the fixed cost to raise corn and how much is that per acre. If we find that we can sell corn and we can generate revenue at $800 an acre and maybe our co total cost for all of our expenses are only $700 an acre, then we can see that easily we can have $100 in profit on every acre of corn we grow. So that's what we're looking for and from a marketing standpoint, those are really important things for you because that's what is how you're going to market your product. If you know what your per acre costs are, then you know what selling price you need to get to be able to cover all of your costs. The other thing we need to think about is with our enterprise budgets is that the profit that we are going to find with this enterprise budget is going to be an economic profit. So in other words, we talked about opportunity costs, meaning those things that maybe we don't pay cash for. They're implicit types of costs. Perhaps it is the value of our land, even though maybe our land is paid off. Perhaps it's the value of our own labor, even though we aren't paying ourselves labor. Those types of costs we want to, we want to include because we want to be able to find what our economic profit is. In other words, can we cover everything, including the cash costs, plus all the opportunity costs for ourselves, our land, our management, those kinds of things. We want to make sure that we are able to cover those different types of costs.